So up next, we're going to talk about glue joint design. Um, and this applies to pretty much any 3D printing technology. So, you know, SLA, MJF, and FDM, uh, the machines we're talking about in uh, this presentation, this applies to all of them. Um, so, you know, why would you want to do a glue joint? Uh, maybe your part's too big for the, uh, the 3D printing machine you want to run it on. Uh, maybe there's internal features that you have to get support out of uh, before the part is put together uh, in its final form. So you have to print it in two pieces. Um, there's a lot of different reasons. Uh, you might want to combine two different materials together. Maybe you want a rubber material and you want a nylon or, you know, a photopolymer. Um, you know, these are all reasons for a glue joint. Um, but uh, you really need to, like, think through your glue joint design. Uh, a lot of people don't do this, and uh, it can come back to bite you depending on what you're hoping your part's going to do. So first thing is, think about how the forces are going to move through your part. You know, just like anything, if you're designing a, you know, bolt joint, you know, welded components, you know, press fit, um, you want to think about how the forces are going to move through your glue joint. And you want to, you know, back up your joint as much as possible. So what I mean by that is instead of just doing a straight cut through your part, you know, can you add locating features in all the, the different directions uh, so that, you know, your forces aren't just pulling on the glue or pushing on the, blue, the glue or doing a shear through the glue, but you actually have 3D printed material that it's pushing against. And the glue is there really just to kind of hold things together. Um, and that's kind of what you can see with, uh, with this right here. You can see there's actually a lip uh, around there, and there's this notch feature in the center. Um, so those features right there, you know, it gives us, you know, the ability to, you know, back the part up in this direction and to back the part up in this direction. And now there's only one direction that's really going to pull on our glue joint. <clears throat> um, so think about which direction you're going to put that in and, and put it in the direction where the forces aren't going to actually impart that on your, your glue joint. Um, <clears throat> so uh, the alignment feature also helps when us or you go to put it together. You know, if you just have two, feet, two parts with a straight cut through it, you're always going to get a little bit of misalignment. Well, if you do a glue joint design, you get 100% alignment and, and it looks really nice when you're done. It doesn't look crappy like a lot of glue joints or a lot, what a lot of people think glue joints are going to look like. Um, <clears throat> so the best way to do a glue joint in SolidWorks is to use these three commands, uh, surface sweep, split, and then a move face. Uh, so the surface sweep, um, you know, in this case, we're looking at the, the side of this glue joint right here. You know, we draw a sketch on the side of our part. We draw another sketch on this top surface right here with the route and we surface sweep that right through the part. Uh, then you use your split command that splits the pieces into two. So now you have a multi-body part. Um, and then from there, you move face. What, what's the move face for? Well, we need to actually leave some room for that glue to sit in there. We don't want to just put the parts together and mush all that glue out of the glue joint. You want to leave a little bit of room in there for that glue to, to stay behind and do what you want it to do. So, you know, adding a five thousandths glue joint um, which you can see uh, in this face right here, you can see there's a 5,000 gap right there, there's a 5,000 gap right there, and then we went face to face on those faces um, <clears throat> because we wanted to, you know, get the best load, you know, that's where the load is going to be passing through our part, so we want to leave face to face there, try and counteract that load as much as possible. Um, <clears throat> and then another little pro tip, put chamfers on your inside corners. What this does is it gets rid of a potential area for a burr or for a little bit of an accuracy that keep your glue joint from wanting to come together and have a face-to-face -face fit. You might you know, have a gap because you can't actually physically push the parts all the way together because those corners are holding it apart. Um, <clears throat> you know, the golden rule of additive manufacturing, complexity is free. You can put chamfers, you can put fillets, you can put holes, you can do anything. It's not going to cost you extra like injection molding or CNC machining. Um, so go nuts. You know, this is a great little thing. It takes you two minutes to do it, but it can Im dramatically improve the cosmetic appearance of your glue joint um, and get you a little bit better fit. Um, you know, other glue joint designs here at the top, you can see there's, there's different kind of puzzle piece type designs you can do. You know, really it's up to you. 
you know, as long as we can, you know, print the parts and get them to go together, whatever shape you can come up with is, is good to go for 3D printing. A um, little pro tip here uh, for everyone watching. Uh, the best glue we have found for bonding a wide range of 3D printed materials is Loctite HY uh, 4070. Um, so this material, we've tested it with a wide range of 3D printed materials. You know, like I said, gluing rubber to nylon or, you know, rubber to a, you know, a photopolymer. Um, it's incredible how well and how versatile this glue works. So highly recommend for anyone who uh, is looking for a glue recommendation. Okay, well, that is my presentation. Uh, I appreciate your time and sticking with me here to the end. Um, we covered a lot of ground today. Um, you know, definitely hit me up and I'd be happy to share this slide deck with you. Um, again, Paul DeWise, and uh, you can see on the screen here is my email address. So, you know, shoot me an email or uh, I'm extremely active on LinkedIn as well. So please uh, reach out and uh, connect with me on LinkedIn and, you know, slide into my DMs. I'd be happy to send you the, the slide deck that way as well. Um, you know, also I'm, I'm always happy to answer questions or give feedback on design. So, you know, if you're working on something and, uh, it's going to be 3d printed and you're looking for someone to be a second set of eyes, you know, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I do a lot of that. Um, <clears throat> and also one last shameless plug, check out our website, uh, forerunner3d.com. Um, it's got a ton of great information. We do a lot of testing and a lot of R and D and we publish everything to our website. So there's great design guides for all the technologies we talked about today um, with a lot of content that you're just not going to find anywhere else. Um, so, yeah. So thank you so much for your time and attention and uh, look forward to hopefully hearing from you.